LBC. Call 0345 6060 973. 7.34, more of your stories about the price of petrol in a moment as we're stalking about money and business. Let's get an update on the big stories there. We turn to Will Walker-Arnott, who's from Charles Stanley, Senior Investment Manager at Charles Stanley, and joins me now. Uh, and the Financial Times praising the work of one young man, uh, and I say this with no envy at all. Credit to him. Good luck. I speak of Tony, Sir Tony Blair, sorry, eldest child, Ewan Blair. Worse, well, here's the figures from Will. What sort of money are we talking about, Will? Good morning. Well, yeah, morning. Yeah, well, he's he's now raising or raised money for his company Multiverse, and it's been valued at 1.7 billion, making it one of the most valuable startups in the UK. Now, this means it's a unicorn, and a unicorn is a private company worth at least one billion dollars, and they're pretty rare uh, this side of the Atlantic. Very common to be found in the US, but pretty rare in the UK. What's quite ironic about this story is that he's seemingly making money by dismantling one of his father's flagship policies, because you'll remember, (laughs) Nick, that he was very keen to get, well, Tony Blair was very keen to get about 50% of students into um, university education, and now um, his son is trying to get people to take a different career path by moving into apprenticeships. All right, money coming in there. Uh, money coming into Zara as well. I know, beloved by many of my listeners, I don't know whether you or anyone in your life is a fan, but once they get it, they love Zara, Will. Yeah, Intertex is the company, and they had a very good day in the markets yesterday, up 6%. Um, as you said, they probably that, that name is not familiar to your listeners, but they own brands like Zara. Yeah. They reported um, very, very good results yesterday. What were the themes behind these results? Well, um, they now expect online sales to account for about 30% of their sales going forward. So it suggests that the pandemic pivot to online is here to stay. They had some problems in Russia. They had to close about 500 stores there, but significantly... They posted very strong growth in the U.S., and that still remains their second largest market. So the U.S. consumer is still spending money on non-discretionary items, which is a positive. All right. It's a brief performance today because I've got Michael Gove hanging on the line. We'll talk in more detail tomorrow. Thanks. Will Walker-Arnott, Senior Investment Manager with Charles Stanley. LBC Business Update. With Direct Line Landlord Insurance. Get multi-property insurance. So let's go to Michael Gove. I'm sure he's going to tell us more about this announcement. It's almost like sale of the century once again, as uh, piloted some years ago by Margaret Thatcher, the idea that people will be able to buy their housing association or council housing, even benefit claimants, proclaims one headline in The Times, a paper of great record. Michael Gove is levelling up housing and community secretary and joins me now. Um, Can we just touch on one thing before we get to details on this, Mr Gove? Uh, I have to say, you will be aware... Petrol prices spiked by their highest level since 17 years yesterday. Yes. The OECD says the UK economy will grow 3.6% this year, followed by 0% growth next year. And others are saying we're looking at double-digit inflation. What are you and your senior colleagues going to do about it? Good morning. Hi, good morning, Nick. Challenging news, yes. Um, uh, On fuel, uh, it's the case that the Chancellor of the Exchequer has already uh, cut fuel duty by uh, by five pence, uh, and we are keeping a vigilant watch on what's happening on the forecourts. That's been wiped out, uh, Mr Gove, of course, by increases, as you'll Uh, be aware. Oh, completely. Um, uh, I'm, I'm not for a moment, uh, Nick, denying the uh, uh, the pressures that households are facing. They're very real, um, uh, and government can help. Uh, but when we're facing uh, the sorts of problems that we have in the energy market as a result of war in Ukraine, then it is very difficult for, for, for everyone. And I know that many of your listeners, uh, uh, some of them have been um, abroad over the, uh, the half term, will have seen those prices um, in places um, uh, in Europe, for example, um, which have been spiralling even ahead of our own. Uh, you also quite rightly raised the uh, very bracing report from the OECD. Uh, just two things I'd say to put it in context. Uh, we had quite high growth, um, uh, the second highest in the G7. They're predicting that our growth will be lower, but they're also predicting that inflation will fall as well. We'll see because one of the things about the OECD report is that, uh, in, you know, entirely fair, but it, it was produced, the groundwork was done, I think, before the Chancellor's big package, just before the recess, um, with more support for people uh, to help with the cost of living. So, uh, as ever, Rishi will do everything he can to help those who are most vulnerable. But when we're facing the sorts of difficulties uh, that the war has generated, and and particularly some of the difficulties that we inherited um, after the COVID lockdown, then it is not an easy time. I don't shy away from that. But if we come back to growth, we we heard the Prime Minister yesterday saying that the government's only been able to take the measures that it's taken. He would claim to provide the support to citizens because of the growth the UK has enjoyed. And now we hear the growth is zero. Who's right? Well, 
uh, as I say, it is a prediction from uh, one, you know, pretty robust think tank, but it's a it's a think tank prediction. It, it's also the case that it's expected that after a period of lower growth, uh, that the economy will bounce back and that inflation will fall. But as I say, uh, the prediction was made, I, I think, before uh, there was an opportunity to digest all of the measures that Rishi announced uh, uh, just the other week. Do you drive a motor? Do you run a motor car, Mr. Gove? I'm unaware whether you do or you don't. A personal I car. used to. I don't have a car at the moment. Oh, so there's no point asking. Fair enough. There's no point asking you. Let me instead ask you, do you know the breakdown in percentage terms of what goes to the government for each litre of fuel? Are you aware of that? Uh, not off the top of my head, okay. no. Fuel duty, 34.9%. VAT, mm. 16%. You're a bright bloke. That means that more than 50% goes to... Yeah. When I say you, I don't mean you. Goes to the government. Why? No, no, You've it's... had your own wind. The government, I'm sorry, has had its mm. own windfall here by the increase in the price of petrol. You're very keen on windfall taxes for the energy companies. Why can't there be a windfall tax on the government? Because you're taking more than 50 percent every time people fill up their cars, motorbikes and vans. Mr. Gove. It's a, fa it's a fair challenge. But um, one of the things I, uh, we, we discussed earlier is the fact that the, the Chancellor has uh, reduced fuel duty. And indeed, fuel duty has been frozen uh, in the past. Uh, every time that we uh, have frozen or cut fuel duty, uh, the opposition parties have uh, voted against that. Um, and it's, it's understandable that when you've got uh, uh, a need to balance both pressure on the consumer, but also the need to make sure that public services are funded, fuel duty along with um, other duties um, uh, is one of the measures that any government would use. But, but you have had a windfall. Surely the, the idea of perhaps suspending VAT, taking 10p off the fuel duty, something like that to help people, that must be worth consideration, Mr Gove. Well, uh, Rishi's always looking at ways in which we can uh, help people face the uh, uh, cost of living challenges that we're all facing at the moment. But it's also the case that we need to make sure that we continue to fund public services as well. Right. So um, I will, uh, when, when I see Rishi a little bit later... Um, I will make the point to Tim that you very oh, fairly uh, made to me. Uh, but but again, uh, the windfall tax that you mentioned were imposing on energy companies, the, the energy levy uh, that the Chancellor has introduced, that will help to um, uh, reduce some of the pressures that hard-pressed consumers are facing. Some were struck, you mentioned Rishi, some were struck yesterday. The Prime Minister, of course, his first appearance since that uh, no-confidence vote, and there was Rishi by his side and the great Zahawi and Pritzker, and I think even the doctor was in the house, Dr Coffey and Dominic Raab. Michael Gove, you weren't there. Why? Um, I was preparing for um, the speech that I gave on the levelling up and regeneration bill, um, which is the new legislation that we're introducing, um, which will help to level up the well, economy. Well, I'm sure the Pritzker also... had a lot to do, and I'm sure the great Zahawi had a lot, but they all managed to turn up. You are full square behind the PM, aren't you, Mr Gove? Uh, absolutely. Uh, but when anyone's watching Prime Minister's Question Time, uh, I think that, as, as you say, um, uh, if your eye, uh, your gaze temporarily moves away from the Prime Minister and onto the front bench, the great Zahawi and the Pritzker um, are a far more uh, decorative addition to the front bench than my ugly mug. I will not hear such a thing. But let's move on to other matters. The headline in The Times, a paper you know well, Johnson to let benefit claimants buy homes. What lies behind yes. this housing secretary? Um, we want to make sure that more people can enjoy the dream of home ownership. The number of people owning their own homes, the overall percentage, uh, has fallen in recent years. We want to reverse that trend. Uh, there are people who are receiving housing benefit at the moment, who are uh, uh, in work, um, and that benefit is going into the pockets of uh, buy-to-let landlords rather than helping people uh, to pay off a mortgage and acquire uh, a home which they can pass on to their children. We want to change that. Uh, uh, so how in practical terms, what is the price, an average house price in the United Kingdom at this time, Mr Gove? I think it's just over 200,000. Mm, it's a bit more. It's £289,000 at the moment. Yeah. How is someone on benefits going to purchase a home? Well, it's already the case that there are people who are uh, on in-work benefits who uh, are paying significant sums uh, in rent, and, and the amount that they're paying in rent, uh, if they converted that into mortgage repayments, they would be able handsomely to meet their mortgage repayments uh, from uh, their overall income. And uh, the average house price that you mentioned, of course, takes account of the fact that property prices in London and the South East are significantly higher than elsewhere. Um, and 
uh, again, as levelling up secretary, one of the things I want to do is to make sure that we can extend home ownership across the country. And there'll be many people in the north, the Midlands and the South West who will be well able to get onto the property ladder well, using the amount that they currently uh, earn and receive in uh, universal credit. What, what sort of rental would they be paying then if it would match their mortgage payments? How much outgoing are we talking a, a, a month? Um, we're, 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 we're talking uh, hundreds of pounds a month and we're talking in particular about individuals who are currently, as I say, in the private rented sector. Um, we know that overall one of the big changes in the course of the last few years has been that the number of people who own their own homes has diminished as the number of people in the private rented sector, not the social rented sector, has increased. But these homes would be sold at a considerable discount, would they? The, the, the price would be uh, discounted? Well, uh, if you're in a housing association home, we are now uh, proposing to give you the opportunity to acquire your housing association home uh, at a discount, absolutely. What, what uh, sort of discount, it, Mr Gove? Well, it will depend on how long someone's been in the home. Um, it, the numbers will be capped. Um, and, of course, what we want ca to do is to make sure... At what? Uh, well, again, one of the things I'll be doing is talking to housing associations themselves um, about the, uh, uh, their ability to be able to release stock. So I, I won't get into the exact figures at the moment. But Do we you want know to the, the, I've, I've got the figure in front a of A universal me. right. I've got the figure in front of well, what is reported to be the figure by the Times, a paper of great record, as you would know personally. Do you know the figure, the maximum discount? Uh, no, I don't know the maximum discount, no. 70. 70% um, uh, it says here. That's what Mr. Johnson uh, yes, will be I saying. Yes, I don't think we'll be offering 70% discounts um, for our housing association right to buy on, on market price, it says here. So who yes. will swallow that? Who, who makes up that well, money? I, uh, I, let me look again at what the Times are reporting. As you say, it's paper of great record. Uh, very rare that they get any facts wrong. Uh, but I'd, I'd have to check that out. We're not proposing to offer discounts of that scale on housing association properties. And how confident are you, once these folk have been put on the housing ladder, which is great aspiration, and we all support mm. that, absolutely... What about then maintaining their properties? Has that been taken into account? If the boiler goes, the roof falls in. You've owned homes, you know exactly what I'm talking about, particularly when you've not got a lot of money coming in, and suddenly the central heating packs up. How are they meant to pay for that, Mr Gove? Well, uh, again, I think that uh, uh, all of us recognise that uh, uh, once you're um, on the path to home ownership, uh, that you're taking on an additional level of responsibility. But I trust people uh, to make uh, their own decisions about budgeting at the moment, rather than seeing that money, uh, in effect, uh, disappear from uh, their budgets and go into the hands of landlords. Uh, I'd like to see them building up a, a stock of capital over time. Uh, you are right, of course, uh, that uh, if you're a, a renter in the private rented sector or in the social rented sector, then your landlord takes on those responsibilities. But... I have to say that while there are some very, very good uh, landlords um, in the private rented sector and also in the social rented sector, there are also a very small minority of bad ones. And that's why we're also introducing legislation to deal with that. Yesterday, new bill in the House of Lords to make sure that housing associations that are not looking after their tenants can be fined uh, if they let people down and people are living in squalid circumstances. Last couple of questions, um, Mr Gove. Are we likely to see any tax cuts soon? Uh, the Chancellor and the PM want to and will introduce tax cuts, uh, but uh, the Chancellor would kill me uh, if I uh, announced anything before he did. B can we have a rut? I don't want you to suffer any injury, let alone fatal. Can we have any idea of a timeline, Mr Gove, when we might hear more? Uh, I respect Rishi too much uh, to say more at this stage, other than, uh, as he outlined in a speech Earlier this week, he is a uh, laser focused on reducing the cost of government and reducing tax in due course. Lastly, next week marks a very dark anniversary in this city and indeed in this country. Five years since the Grenfell Tower fire. I know yes. that you and your colleagues will be marking that and you're working very hard about that. But at this time, how many buildings are still have this flammable cladding? Uh, a significant number. We've reduced the number of buildings that are um, over uh, 18 metres high that have that cladding. Um, and uh, there's still much more work to do on those which are uh, at the 11 to 18 uh, metre uh, sort of, you know, uh, area, which is also but, uh, a cause for concern. But uh, I, I've concluded negotiations with developers. We've got £4 billion out of them in order to speed this up. Uh, uh, remediation work has been far too slow, but, but at last it's accelerating. I Come on, you're a journo, as am I. Significant number. I can't let you off there, Mr Gove. What is a significant number? 
Uh, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but what I will do, uh, Nick, is I will give you and LBC uh, listeners a, a full spreadsheet of the buildings 18 metres above, which we've taken the so most So there is an, so, somebody from. somewhere in your department. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There is a man or woman who could say, Mr Gove, don't worry, it's 2,971, or whatever it is. Oh, totally. I, we, we can give you the exact figures on the number of buildings over 80 metres that have had ACM cladding removed, which is the worst type of cladding. And the ones the still of with cladding. That's what I was driving at, Mr Gove. Do we yeah, know no, no, how no. many we, are we, still we, out there? We can, we can give you those figures. OK, so maybe possibly later today I could have that figure from one of your colleagues? It, oh, absolutely, yes. Grateful for your time. Thank you very much indeed. Michael Gove, Secretary of State for Leveling Up Housing and Communities, appearing here on LBC, making us a little late to the 7.45 news headline. Simon Conway. Measures to help more people onto the housing ladder will be set out by Boris Johnson later. The energy watchdog says thousands of customers were provided an unacceptable service following Storm Arwen last November. It's claimed there's been a large rise in the number of jobs offering a four-day week. LBC weather, outbreaks of rain in the west moving eastwards, many parts dry with sunny spells, a high of 22 degrees.